let's look at a couple of word problems that we can solve by using our factoring techniques that we've just learned. The problems that we're going to look at come directly from the assignment factoring word problems that you will be completing tonight for homework. The first problem is on the page that has numbered questions and is question number six. I chose this one somewhat randomly, but it seems to be a pretty good example of the type of thing that you need to be able to do. Question 6 says to find two consecutive positive odd integers whose product is 35. Now, you may be able to look at this and just identify that the correct answer is 5 and 7. 5 and 7 are consecutive positive odd integers and their product, 5 times 7, is 35. But that's not the point. As I always say, it's about the process, not about the answer. So let's remember what it means to deal with two consecutive odd integers. We'll worry about the positive part later. If we have two consecutive odd integers, well the first one we can call x, and the next one, because it's the next odd number, is going to go up by 2. So that's going to be x plus 2. Now these two numbers are consecutive odd integers. Uh, to get from one odd number, x, to the next odd in integer, we have to go up by 2. Now we want to say that their product is 35. Their product is just the result of a multiplication. So we say that x times x plus 2 equals 35. Now I will apply the distributive property, and I will be on my way. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And I'm going to save myself a little bit of a step here. Uh, I know that in order to solve an equation like this, I'm going to have to use the zero product property, which means I need to get this 35 over to the left side of the equation so that I have a zero remaining on the right. In order to, in order to do that, I will subtract 35 from each side since there are no like terms with which to combine it. I'll have this trinomial equal zero. Now this is a basic to basic trinomial to factor here uh, because my lead coefficient is 1. Now what's really nice about this is that I have a negative 35 which tells me that I'm going to have x plus something and x minus something equaling 0. Uh, again that's because I have a negative constant term the only way to arrive at that is with one positive and one negative factor. And so now I just kind of think about what numbers are going to multiply to negative 35 and add up to 2. And there's only a few options to consider. And it turns out that I want to use a positive 7 and a negative 5. Now when I do that, uh, I have a polynomial equation set up to use the split and solve. And so the split and solve gives me x plus 7 equals 0, which would be x equals negative 7, and the other one would be x minus 5 equals 0, which gives me x equals 5. Now, this is when I go back to my original problem and make sure that I've answered the question. I was looking to find two consecutive positive. Whoa! Positive! That sets up a, uh, an alert for me because one of my options was negative. Negative 7, therefore, is not an option. It's the choice that I want to disregard. So the answer that I'm looking at for x is 5. But again, I want to make sure that I've answered the question. The question's looking for two consecutive positive odd integers, which I originally described as x and x plus 2. So if my first answer is x equals 5, then x plus 2 is going to equal 7. And that's my other integer. Now I have 5 and 7 as my two consecutive positive odd integers whose product is 35. By going back, I've been able to make sure that I've got not only the full answer, but the only one that works. The second problem I want to look at today comes from the other side of the sheet. And uh, this is from the side with the lettered problems. This is problem E. 
Uh, these are all geometry type word problems that we'll use factoring to solve. A square field had 5 meters added to its length and 2 meters added to its width. The field then had an area of 130 square meters. Find the length of a side of the original field. This is the type of problem, as opposed to the last one, that you really don't have an answer to right away. It's hard to just guess an answer to this. And even if we could, we'd want to make sure that we could solve it algebraically. Let's start off with a simple diagram. It doesn't need to be too complicated. Here's my original field. It's square. I don't know how long each side is right now, so I'm just going to give it a basic measurement of x. The reason that I know it's x on each side is because it's a square, where all of the sides are congruent. They're all the same length. Now, let's change this diagram by adding 2 meters to its width and 5 meters to its length. You can see now that we've formed a rectangular field. And now the width is not just the x, but it's actually going to be x plus 2, because it's the original length x and the additional 2 meters that have been added on. Similarly, its length has been increased by 5, so now its length, instead of being x, is x plus 5. Now the key fact becomes the, that we know that the field has an area of 130 square meters, and that's the, uh, the new dimensions uh, give us the area of 130 square meters. So it's important to note the formula for the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width. So since we have expressions for the length and width, I can put those in. We know that the length is x plus 5, and the width is x plus 2. We also actually know the area. The area is 130 square meters. I don't need to worry about the square meters until I'm actually just looking at a final answer. Uh, I can work with 130 just as a pure number right now. In order to solve this equation, I'm first going to have to FOIL, distribute, multiply, however I want to do it. I want to expand the right side of my equation because I have to combine everything and then get zero on one side of the equation before I can solve it. When I uh, multiply these things here, my 130 comes down and uh, I end up with an x squared, that's x times x plus 2x is 2 times x, plus 5x is 5 times x, and plus 10 is 5 times 2. I want to get 0 on one side of the equation, so I'm going to subtract the 130, and when I do that, I'm also going to combine the like terms of 2x and 5x. So I'm going to have 0 equals x squared plus 7x minus 120. Once again, we come to a polynomial equation. Uh, where the lead coefficient of this quadratic term is 1. That's really convenient. Uh, I know my general setup is going to be 0 equals x and x. And the fact that my constant term is negative 120 will tell me that I'm using a positive in one and a negative in the other. Now I have to consider what two numbers multiply to 120 negative 120 and add up to 7. With a little trial and error we can find the numbers that we're looking for are 15 and negative 8. Uh, you can do a quick FOIL to make sure that that works um, but uh, we can be assured that those are, that, that is the factored form. Now I can use the zero product property, split and solve, and I get two values for x. I get x equals uh, negative 15, and I get x equals 8. Those are both the solutions to the equation, but I want to make sure I go back to my original problem and find something that I'm sure will work. Since I'm talking about a field and the lengths of its dimensions, I can't possibly have a negative length. So that's why I disregard the option of x equals negative 15. The answer that I really want to use is x equals 8. Now I can actually use that and check to make sure that it's going to work. If my original field was an 8 by 8 square, then when I add the dimensions to each side, 
I end up generating a 10 by 13 rectangle. I get that just by adding 2 meters to the width and 5 meters to the length. And now I can very easily see that the area of this rectangle would be its length times its width, which would be 13 times 10, which equals the 130 square meters that I wanted to have in the first place. So to answer the original question, the length of a side of the original field, the answer I'm looking for, 8 meters. Make sure you put the proper label on it, but by going back to the original problem, we're able to figure out that we had the correct answer. I hope this helps you solve all your word problems using factoring.